Alright, so as you can see here, basically I've just got a real simple uh, representation here. And the only reason I put the, the radius in here, the curve section, whatever, arc, whatever you want to call it, um, is just to, to signify to me which side of that piece is this. Because I could have literally just drawn the top, a little square and put that hole in the center there because that's where I've got my origin. And the reason I did that is because when I set it in there for the first time, I know that I want to be basically 0.8 by 1. So when I set it in the mill, I'm not going to worry about, you know, where the sides are, front, back, all that kind of stuff. I'm basically, because this isn't extremely critical, anything within a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch, perfectly fine. It's just a sway bar mount, and it's a very long mount link, so that uh, you, there's room there. I just don't want to get it too close to the side, because then if it does angle the bolt over, the nut on the underside, which is why this is clearanced, uh, it, it'll hit the side bolt. Okay. So instead of drilling them, hammering them, drilling them, that kind of stuff, like I did the last time, I thought, you know, let me take a couple minutes. I'm a whole lot better at this cam than I was last time I did this, so it's not taking that long to do this. So I did this representation, I put two holes in it, and then I created two different setups. So one is the left hole, which represents the driver's side, which is already in the vise. The other side is the passenger side, and this is the passenger side. Um, so as you look at it there, it's going to be over here with this. So what I'll do is I'll, and I'll do it on the mill here in a second too, but basically I'll just run the bit down over here and get it close, and then I'll zero out X, Y, and Z, and there's my offset, there's my work offset, that's why I set the origin right there. Um, and it's a piece of cake, there's only one operation, it's just a simple bore. I'm using a 5 16 cutter, which for some reason it still thinks it's a ball end. That's not right. I just have this on there as a temporary stop so I can put it in there and put it up against it. And that looks pretty darn close. Okay, a couple things I changed. I like that feed and speed. Uh, I got rid of, I preset it out, commented out more or less, the tool change, so that way as soon as I hit cycle start, it no, thinks it's already got the correct tool in and it comes down. I'm only using one tool. No point in having it stop. And then I also got rid of the homing because I can easily reach and set this up when it's back here under the spindle. So there's no point in having it move all the way forward and all the way back, so. So this was one of those operations where guys say it's so easy to set up the CNC mill, why bother doing it on the manual? You know, so it really didn't take that much longer and then I, it was nicer, it was easier, I could hit start, I could turn around and blow parts. You know, the, much more than this, it'd start to get to be a bit more of a challenge, but uh, uh, there's certainly something to be said for once you start learning how to manipulate and how to control and run the CNC well enough, and I'm just starting to get there, that then doing this kind of stuff becomes, oh, I'd rather do it on the CNC than do it on the manual mill because the added time, the little bit of extra time it takes in setting it up is countered by, and you still have some setup on the regular, on the manual, but I don't know. It's just kind of nice to know that I'm getting more <laughs> work out of the CNC mill. Granted, if I had something else going at the same time and the mill was running, I would do this manually in a heartbeat.